I just mentioned briefly, let's see what time we got here. Let me just mention briefly four things that I feel like that the cause calls for. Number one, it calls for courage. We're going to have to be brave enough to overcome our fear of sharing the gospel in a world that's not as friendly to the gospel as it used to be, in a world that's not as receptive of a personal conversation or even a handshake or, or, or anybody being, being approached by somebody. We're going to have to overcome the fear of rejection because, you know, we have to be willing to, to risk what we, are, our, our lives, our, I don't mean our reputation, but people's opinion of us, where we, you know, we're so afraid. This cancel culture has affected Christians really badly. You know, um, it's going to take courage. It's going to take commitment. It's not as easy. And you know what? In 40 years of serving God, every decade I look back and say, wow, it's harder than it used to be. All I'm trying to get at is, is, yeah, for 40 years, all I've heard was, is, boy, back in the 60s, man, we were winning people left and right. Back in the 70s, boy, the bus ministry was just, you know, they were just booming. But, man, I'm, it's just not like it used to be. But people can still go after them if they want to. And it's going to take courage. It's going to take commitment. The third thing it's going to take is compassion. Somebody's going to have to care. And that's what I think is a problematic as anything is the fear that we're facing now has caused us to withdraw so much that we're more concerned about our own personal safety than we are somebody else dying and going to hell. And I don't mean that critically. I don't mean that sarcastically. I understand that. I understand that fear. And so it calls, calls for courage. It calls for commitment. It calls for compassion. It also calls for celebration. Somebody taught me years ago that you produce what you celebrate. But if you want to celebrate, if, you want to, if we, want to have a, we want to take up the cause for souls, then we better celebrate the souls that are one. And it ought to be a big deal when somebody gets saved. It ought to be a big deal when somebody leads somebody to Christ. It's not like we're patting ourselves on our back. It's not like we're trying to be braggadocious. It's a big deal when somebody's translated from death to life, from, the, from the, the power of Satan to the kingdom of God's dear son. It's a big deal. If the angels in heaven are rejoicing because somebody's gotten their name written in the book of life, we ought to rejoice too. It ought to be the biggest thing. It ought to be bigger than anything we do around here. There ought to be no program. There ought to be no activity. There ought to be no game. There ought to be no singing. No anything we do that's more important, that's celebrated greater than somebody getting saved. And we ought to celebrate it more regularly. Baptism is a big thing. That's not salvation, but it's a, it's a big thing for somebody to decide to follow Jesus with their life. David makes this statement, is there not a cause? Here's what I'm trying to get at is it's never easy to keep going, to keep serving, keep teaching your class, keep working with the youth, keep witnessing to people, keep giving to missions, keep going to church. It's never easy. But there's one thing that whenever I've thought Well, I just ought to hand off the baton. I can't ever get David's words out of my head. Is there not a cause? How could I turn my back on the cause that God has left me here for? Amen. 